You should stay in the temple, Tyrande. Malfurion thought that best, and so do I. I have to know what's happening. You saw how many rode in pursuit. If they captured them, they won't. Illidan squinted. The sun was blinding, and he didn't like it at all. He felt weaker. It was annoying, and Tyrande was being annoying and all. I should ride after. You do that, and you'll risk everyone. You want them to take that pet creature of yours to Blackrock Hold? Hell, they may even take us as well. Illidan suddenly shut his mouth, because at the opposite end of the square, several armoured riders appeared, led by none other than Lord Catalos Ravencrest, who was now headed directly towards them. I know you, lad. Illidan's storm rage, isn't it? Yes, my lord. We've... we've met. And this? Surrender Whisperwind, novice priestess of the Temple of Elune. Ravencrest graciously acknowledged Tyrande, and then returned his gaze back to Illidan again. I recall our encounter. He was studying the arts, then. You're not yet a member of the Moon Guard, are you? No, my lord. And you're free of some of their restrictions. By restrictions, the commander was referring to the oath the members of the Moon Guard swear. They owed no loyalty to anyone but the Queen. Very good. I want you to ride with us, then. Both Illidan and Tyrande looked at each other for a moment, slightly confused. My Lord Ravencrest, we would be honoured. Not you, sister. It is the lad alone with whom I speak now. Trying not to show his increasing anxiety, Illidan then piped up. What would you have need of me for, my lord? For the moment, investigation into the escape of the creature we had penned here. I have some notion as to how to find him. I may need the aid of a bit of sorcery. The Moonguard are capable, but I prefer someone who listens to orders. Illidan knew that to refuse Ravencrest would be ever so slightly suspicious, but to join him would risk Malfurion. Deep down, the young sorcerer kind of wished Tyrande could tell him what the bloody hell he was supposed to do, but there was really only one choice. I'd be honoured, my lord. Excellent. Rotharak, a mount for our young sorcerer friend here. The officer in question immediately approached with a spare knight saber, almost as if this entire encounter had been a foregone conclusion from the start. The sun is well upon us, my lord. We'll make do. A short while later, Illidan, Ravencrest and the rest were making their way through the foggy forest. Seeing the thick mist had made Illidan feel slightly better, meant more hope for his brother. Out of nowhere, Ravencrest suddenly slowed his mount, with the rest following suit. Up ahead, there seemed to be a number of peculiar mounds scattered along the trail. Ominous mounds. The night elves then cautiously approached. By the blessed Ashara's eyes. Illidan stayed silent, gaping at the half dozen dead night elves lying before them. Their bodies were absolutely torn to shreds, and some of them looked almost sucked dry by some kind of vampiric force. They looked like raisins. That green-skinned creature was not alone. There must have been two dozen or more to do something like this. Again, Illidan remained silent, more concerned about what might have happened to Malfurion. This couldn't be the work of his brother. So was Ravencrest right? Had Brox betrayed Malfurion and led him to his savage comrades? Illidan's fist then tightened. Should have slain the beast when he had the opportunity, he thought. My lord, come look at this. Both Illidan and Ravencrest obliged, following the panicked officer, and soon found themselves staring wide-eyed at yet another horrific sight. "'Twas a creature of nightmare, stabbed with a stick. "'What do you make of it, sorcerer?' "'I have no idea, Lord Ravencrest. "'No idea.' "'Again, Illidan's thoughts turned to his brother. "'Had Malfurion stabbed this monster? "'Seemed unlikely. "'He was gifted in druid stuff, but very curious. "'Where are the rest of the first party? "'There should be twice as many as we found.' "'Very conveniently, a mournful horn blast then arose from the south.' and the commander immediately pointed in that direction. That way. But be wary. There may be more of these monsters about. The party then made their way south, coming across a dead panther, with its entire side ripped open and organs hanging out. And the commander noted that a lot of his men now looked extremely terrified. Steady. Keep order. The horn then sounded again, this time rather feebly, but it was definitely much closer. And by much closer, it was definitely directly ahead. As the group moved closer, Illidan had the horrible feeling that something was watching them. Or more specifically, watching him. Another one, my lord! Sure enough, a second hellish beast lay dead before them. 
This one with a broken nose, as well as several strange rope-like marks on its legs. What had killed it, however, was several stubs to its throat by Night Elven Blades. <coughs> Illidan and Ravencrest head towards that weird noise to find a Night Elf propped up against a tree. He wasn't looking so good, because half his face was torn off. Are there any more survivors? The mauled Night Elf opened his mouth, but no words came out, only disgusting gurgling sounds. Rotharak, see to his wounds. Give him water. Aye, my lord. The rest of you, fan out. Now. Illidan remained with Ravencrest, whilst the others tried to establish what they hoped would be a safe perimeter. You could feel the tension in the air, though. So many of their fellows, including three spellcasters, had been massacred. So morale was a bit shit. Who was responsible for this? The escaped prisoner? This time, the half a face night elf actually did manage some words. Never saw that one, my lord. So it was those monsters then? Yes. The wounded soldier then regaled the story. The soldiers and the moon guard had pursued the escaped orc and another unidentified figure through the forest. But they then came across a nightmarish beast, stabbed with a stick. The lead sorcerer Hargathen tried to take a closer look at the dead creature, but a second monster jumped out of the bushes. Its tentacles latched onto the sorcerer, and the other night elves watched in horror as his entire body shriveled dry and he looked like a raisin. And after finishing with Hargathen, the beast seemed to go on and target two more spellcasters and do exactly the same thing. However, the soldiers recovered from their shock and charged the beast, stabbing it in the throat as many times as they possibly could. Unfortunately, they realised a little bit too late that there was in fact a third monster. And at that point in the story, the half a face soldier passed out. See what you can do for him, to ease his pain. I want to take another look at that first carcass. Illidan, with me. So, Illidan and Ravencrest head back up the trail, whilst the others continued to survey the area. What did you make of the story? Have you heard of such things? Never, my lord. But then I'm not part of the Moonguard. I'm not privy to their arcane knowledge. For all the good their knowledge did them. Argathen was always too confident. Most of the Moonguard are. Ravencrest then knelt down and studied the dead beast. In all my years, I've never seen a thing so well designed for carnage. The commander then lifted a leathery tentacle. Curious appendage. What do you make of it? Based on the story, it's vampiric in nature, my lord. It seemed to target the spellcasters, so I'd hazard a guess that it leeches magical energy. The other thing Illidan noted from the story, but did not say out loud, was that this first beast was dead upon arrival, meaning the only ones that could have slain it were Malfurion and Brox. And there was one more thing about the story that had been bothering Illidan. By his count, they'd seen this dead beast, they'd seen the second dead beast, but... My lord, we never found any sign of the third... Illidan couldn't finish that sentence, because the third fell beast had perfect dramatic timing. The canine horror immediately lashed at Illidan with his tentacles, but the young sorcerer dived out of the way, and with very quick thinking, cast a spell. But not directly at the creature, the thing would no doubt just absorb the magic or something. Instead, Illidan cast his spell at Ravencrust's blade. That was... incredible, Illidan. My lord. Rolthorak then came a-running, and immediately saw the dead fell beast with Ravencrest's blade stuck in its back. You killed one, my lord. Are you injured? It was not me. Here stands the one that readily disposed of this creature. I saw right about you from the first, Illidan Stormrage. You're more capable than a dozen Moongart. Illidan's face cheeks darkened, but he accepted the praise. That was pretty incredible, what he just did. This, sorcery, this was his destiny. Malfurion's path was never meant to be his. Illidan Stormrage, the Moonguard may be ignorant of your prowess, but I am not. You are hereby marked as one of Blackbrook Hall's own. My personal sorcerer. I'm honoured, my lord. Come, we ride back immediately. I want to gather a larger force to bring those carcasses back to the hold. If we're to be invaded by some hellish horde, we must learn everything we can. <laughs>